Hello, it's Victoria from Coastal Themes, and once again interrupting our regular Framer, Webflow and Ghost tutorials to speak about the recent Figma release, and we thought we would do a video on Figma Buzz. So this is my first look at Figma Buzz, I've never clicked into this platform. I am familiar with Canva, I make a lot of my social content on Figma, just regular Figma design. So I'm intrigued to see what Figma Buzz has in store for us. So if you don't know what Figma Buzz is, stick around, we're going to discover this together. I've just jumped into it for the first time and they tell me asset production made easier, uh, create and publish on-brand assets to keep your team's work on brand every time. Awesome. So let's get started. Cool. So same vibes as Figma sites, which we've been through in a previous video. You are faced with lots of templates, which is super helpful and also giving Canva vibes, there's loads of templates on Canva. So I like that you can immediately select a social media post size to get started with. And also really cool that they've taken into consideration ads. So I've used Canva, but I haven't kind of used it to the extent of creating ads. So I'm not sure if they have similar features like this from the get go they've made it very obvious that ads are a big thing so I can click into the ads tab and they show me the size of the ad and then I can see there's loads of cool templates so I'm not going to use templates in this video to start with we're just going to go in without a template and then we will see from there but there's social posts what I am noticing is that Instagram has now brought out your grid is now kind of in they're not squares they're kind of just a bit more rectangular than squares but they're not as long as a story so have they taken that into consideration it doesn't look like it cool there's so many things here zoom backgrounds lots of google ads instagram reels google leaderboard ad so awesome there's loads of stuff going on even events pinterest ads so it's really taking into consideration all all the all the socials and also this looks like it's suitable for print as well or at least kind of digital cards and things like that so that's really handy i know a lot of people lean on figma for print even though there's not kind of a very obvious kind of cmyk things like that but it's still really helpful for design so i'm going to actually just start with an instagram post just as a basis so let's take a look at this interface so we've got all those templates are on the left-hand panel and now it's organized Facebook cover photos, event photos, ads, Twitter, LinkedIn, banners. This is really cool actually because I do a lot of my banners, like my LinkedIn banner I've built by myself, but like getting the dimensions right and uploading it, it always uploads pixelated, but I don't know why. So maybe this will help solve that banners so much there's actually so much and i love how nice the designs are they're not like tacky and ugly look how cool that is so from figma and there's from clients so this is really how handy if you like a social media manager you can work directly with your clients and put in your kind of brand assets to keep on brand and then we have this so if i start duplicating things Instead of, now we're getting to the Adobe vibes, <laughs> instead of Figma normal and Figma sites where all the things are next to each other, everything is now on different pages. So if I make tons of different assets, they're all going to go here and I can keep adding them. If I add new ones, this is really game changing. So on, on Canva, you can't adjust the canvas size um, without changing the canvas size of all the different pages you have in that file so i can still have this as a square and i can toggle it to whatever i want but it's not going to change all my others so this one's now a banner but this one's now an instagram post so i can make a whole range of campaign images uh, on the same file i don't have to make new files and again correct me if i'm wrong but on canva i don't believe you can do this so the templates section and this toggle up here to switch between what type of uh, dimensions and size you need is awesome. So let's get into the design aspect. So I'm just going to start with things like shapes. So shapes, obviously a massive thing, different to Figma where it sits at the bottom and you kind of have a limit on the shape. So I can start 
building shapes. And then my styling all happens in here. There's no right hand design panel. So I can fill it with a color with really nice accessible, like popular colors. That's a bit weird. So I filled it. Oh, there you go. Okay, so there's lots of weird layers going on, but so I've got this. Let's make it the whole page. Okay, so I can make shapes and I can kind of drop in whatever I want. These are kind of like masked out. It's not one whole shape. So that was an arrow. And now if I make that bigger, you can see there's two shapes in here. I can adjust the fills. So it's a bit to wrap your head around. It's not as simple as just a shape and a fill and an outline. So that's important to keep in mind. Let's quickly jump through these. So we've got borders. We've got border radius. Effects, opacity, shadows and blurs. As you would expect. And I like that it's just one slider. It's not all the complex settings you get with shadows on Figma. It's a very simplified version. And then we've got AI tools. That's just the Figma standard image creator AI. And then we've got detaching instances, positioning, and locking position. So that's helpful. Interesting that all the design features are here. And then if we go into text, we can add titles. Once again, the design stays here. So let's pick my buzz and we can adjust the color. So that's simple, much easier to adjust the color. They're not weird layers like there are in shapes, um, borders, fonts, font size. Okay, your normal font styling and alignment. And then we've got the same effects and some AI tools for text specifically. So that's cool. And then there's loads of like fun font combinations and things that they've given us. I like that you can size things up and it sizes up proportionally, which is something you have to click the K, click K for to do on Figma. So you can do this just natively in Figma Buzz, which is so helpful, especially if you're a novice coming in to create social content. So let's see. So there's not too many things in terms of text, but I mean, it's an epic starting point, isn't it? So let's jump into images. So they've really driven quite hard on their OpenAI's um, AI image generator. So let's make something. And you can also change the model from what I could see. You can choose which AI model you use. Oh, this is going to go into this um, shape. So you just have to be careful that you've, you've got the right um, layer or uh, object selected where you want your image to go. Okay, so now it's actually... I masked it. So can I? This is a good test. So on Figma, you can copy properties. So can I copy these properties and paste them here? Yes, I can. So now... I'm glad you can still do that because that's super handy, especially if you're coming from Figma and are used to Figma's tools like copy properties. So here's my birthday cake at a birthday party. AI generated. Looks good to me. <laughs> so we've done text, we've done templates, we've done images now. You can also obviously upload images as normal. And inserts. What are inserts? So inserts, oh, this is where it gets fun. This is where it kind of matches up to Canva. This is where you get stickers. I mean, whether anyone uses these, I don't know. I guess if you're creating very out of the box social content, but different to Canva, I think, is that we can now go in and change little elements here. I think on Canva, you might be able to do this. It just depends on the asset itself. So we've got stickers. What else is there? There's textures. So it looks like these are made by people, whether they're made by people in Figma or made by creators, like external creators, I'm not sure. 
So we've got Polaroids. This is something I always want to use for social content and also for website content. Now the question is, can I copy content from here into a regular Figma file? And I hope so. <laughs> so if I create a new design file, ah uh, yes, I can paste it in. And now I can see all the layers of what's going on. I almost think that it would be really cool if we had a layers panel in here. And I don't think we do, but I guess that is the point. Simplified version, great for content creation. So, ah, so we can view all the pages on the same page. So I can actually make a whole grid of things, which is very helpful. So I can view it as a grid or I can view it as an asset. So let me drop in a template. We've got this edit content button. So, ah, this is cool. This is kind of like when you, I guess if you've used Framer, you can just edit the text directly in here. It's kind of like a CMS for social content. So that's really helpful if you want to use the same template, but just adjust it for different things. So change the dates, change the heading, change whatever. And then you can change the images here and swap out the image. But you don't, especially if you're working with clients, you aren't relying on them going in and changing this, but then they'll move it around and they'll mess it up and things like that. So this is really, really cool. Um, what a neat, clever feature. And then we have bulk create, which I believe is the last thing to look at. Bulk create is, ooh, upload a spreadsheet. So I wonder what this is. I'm going to leave this for now because I don't have a spreadsheet to upload, but that is a super cool little feature. It will be interesting to try out. If you, I guess if you're planning your content on a spreadsheet, it will maybe bulk create different pages. I wonder if it uses AI to give you a baseline. Who knows? So if you've used that, let me know. I'm not going to try it out in this video, but I think that's everything. That is everything there is on the Figma buzz. Definitely, obviously Canva vibes. Will it take over Canva? I'm not sure. Canva's very well built out, but I think if you're designing your social content on just regular Figma and you just want a lower cognitive load platform, jumping into Figma Buzz might just be easier, especially if you're collaborating with people who aren't necessarily pro designers on Figma or know the interface, because it is quite complex. If you start looking at this <laughs> compared to Figma Buzz, very different, a massive learning curve. So yeah, let me know if you've used Figma Buzz, if you're keen to use it, if you think that it might replace your canvas or whatever else you're designing on, maybe you're on Adobe still and you want to move over will dissuade you. That's it from me today and check out our other videos. We've gone deep dive and done a first look into Figma sites and then obviously we have all our normal Framer, Webflow and Ghost tutorials as well as all our Framer and Ghost and Webflow templates which you can buy from coastalthemes.com and if you have any questions, if you have any ideas, if you want me to make more videos on Figma's new releases, drop a comment in the comment section below and I will get back to you. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!